Hey what's up guys, Crazy here, back in No Man's Sky and today we're going to go over 7 more things that the game doesn't actually tell you. Many of these are things that the game doesn't make obvious from the very beginning or simply features that some of us discovered by mistake by simply playing the game. Some of these are very awesome, some are very fun, but also some of them are very useful to know of. As always, let's jump into it and if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up on it would be super awesome. I also want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends. It's pretty much my go-to RPG on my phone right now, but you can also play it on the desktop and it's also free to play. And I'm having a ton of fun making my champions as powerful as they can be and then putting them pretty much against all kinds of challenges. Most recently they also added the all-awaited battle pass that gives you some really awesome rewards, such as for example very powerful artifacts, gems, energy refills, even a legendary at the end of it by just doing a handful of fairly easy battle pass challenges each each day so totally go ahead and check it out by following the links under this video as well as the pinned comment and as a bonus new players will also receive 100,000 silver and a very good early on support champion called Hexweaver for free you will find all of these rewards in the inbox for the next 30 days so better hurry up and redeem them ASAP again a huge shout out to Raid for sponsoring this video and all links can be found in the video description and pinned comment let's begin with a feature that if it was properly implemented by Hello Games, it would probably make No Man's Sky at least 10 times more awesome, and in this case I'm talking about landing on asteroids. And you might be surprised to find out that not only can you land on asteroids with a certain workaround, but many of the bigger ones have fully rendered textures, and not just that, also fully rendered collisions, and yes, when you jump on them you're not going to clip through textures or anything. Now as far as landing on them goes, simply find an asteroid field with some of the these big asteroids, summon your fleet on top of them and then land on the closest frigate to it and from this point on simply jump down and you should be able to land on some of these bigger asteroids. Now the reason I'm suggesting to go on these ones is because as I was saying the collisions over here work perfectly fine, you're able to do pretty much everything you can do on any planet surface like melee boosting, using your multi-tool, even destroy the asteroid with your multi-tool and collect its resources but be careful because that will leave some huge craters. Um, otherwise, the smaller ones tend to have some pretty poor collisions, they don't necessarily fit with their actual 3D models and they tend to be a little bit glitchy, so try to avoid those as well. But otherwise, this also kind of gives us a glimpse into how this feature could work. It would be really awesome if we could also like summon our ships on it or even land over there. It would be really awesome to send probes or even like install extractors on them and generally just do this over there since obviously the game game supports this functionality. But one thing that I do suggest is to either try this on creative mode so that you don't actually die, or if you're doing this on normal mode, try to do it with a fully upgraded uh, character because otherwise the harsh conditions of open space can kill your character rather quickly. Coming up at number 2, one thing that the game doesn't tell us in the newest living ship update is the fact that these organic ships can have some rather big stat ranges on them, in this case at least in terms of maneuverability, hyperdrive range as well as damage, these ships tend to differ quite a lot from one another. So maneuverability can be as high as 225 at default, meanwhile hyperdrive range can be over 160 and the damage way over 300 and the only thing that stays constant is the shield at 180.3. So what you'll want to do over here is when you hunt your living ship is to actually pay close attention to the stats and don't just accept any living ship that is given to you by the game because you can really lose the lottery and this can heavily influence the way you control your ship later on once you fully upgrade it with max rank upgrades. So if you just finish the main storyline and manage to make a permanent save file before actually claiming the ship, you can pretty much refuse this and get a different one later on. Otherwise, if you bought an egg and want to get a second ship, don't just accept any ship that is given upon you and uh, yeah, refuse it and try to get another one in a different system and do this until you actually get one with good stats. Coming up at number 3, since we're still on the subject of actual living ships and the new update, you might be surprised to find out that uh, there's a good source of income as well as resources if you attack the new random encounters and to be more specific the new alien NPC ship as well as uh, the alien traders that get in contact with you every time you're using your pulse drive. So I've tested this with great success but in the case of alien traders you do tend to 
to lose some of that standing with a certain faction that is dominant in your current system so you might not want to do that too often but for the alien mothership that spawns when you have the egg upon you you can kill this indefinitely over and over again and it gives you some really nice resources it can give you like chlorine it can give you um, a lot of other materials such as cobalt uh, activated indium also it gives you some nanites and it's an infinite source of that without actually losing any standing with any faction oh and by the way once you do that and kill the ship you're going to have a dialogue still available and once you activate it it's going to give you the trader window which makes absolutely no sense but if you want to be extra cruel you can sell the same goodies that just dropped from the alien ship and sell them in the new screen i'm pretty sure this is going to get patched really soon but in the meantime again if you want to be extra cruel you can go in and get some really nice resources from this coming up at number four another change that was added in the recent patch was the fact that expeditions and especially the ones that have been completed are easier to spot nowadays and they're pretty much going to be indicated by the color green so whenever you pass one of your command rooms and see something in green it pretty much means that that certain expedition is going to be finished meanwhile if you're seeing your holographic ships in blue it means that they're still actively engaged in their current expedition again nothing too major but it kind of gives you all the information you need at just a glimpse let's move to number five and clearing up some misconceptions about the things that actually influence the types of ships that spawn in any given system as well as how you can increase your chances to get the ship you want at the rank that you want so there's two big factors that actually influence the types of ships that spawn in any given system first it's the system wealth and second it's the dominant life form now the system wealth is something that I've explained many times in the past and this is the biggest factor when it comes to finding actual maximum rank ships the higher the system wealth or economy the higher the chances is for you to actually find something of a high rank for example a maximum s rank has a 2% chance to spawn in any given tier 3 economy so something like wealthy opulent and everything else that is similar the second one is going to be the dominant life form and this is not going to influence what rank the system spawns ships but actually the types of ships that spawn in the first place and here I'm going to go over some of these statistics that uh, you can pretty much read about anywhere so uh, you have to keep in mind that there's three types of systems in terms of dominant life forms we have the gag systems corvax and viking and all of them will spawn roughly 21 to 22 ships seven of them are guaranteed shuttles in all of these three types of dominant life systems meanwhile the rest are going to be pretty much split between haulers explorers as well as fighters with the exotics being of course an extra chance on top so gex for example on top of the seven shuttles they can also spawn seven haulers three explorers and three fighters corvax seven explorers three fighters and three haulers and viking seven fighters three explorers and three haulers and as you can see each of these systems kind of focuses on one type of ship so gex tend to focus on haulers corvax on explorers naturally and viking on fighters so if you're generally looking for a fighter type of ship your best bet is to go in a viking system of rich economy since this has the highest chances to not just spawn a high ranking one but also spawns multiple models that you can choose from and this is pretty much it all you need to know about about spawning these ships from this point on it's all a matter of choosing between a trading post or a space station if you're looking for a guaranteed spawn for like something like a first wave this generally happens on space stations so uh, you might want to also search a forum or research a certain system before doing this as it might have been confirmed before by somebody else if that has the possibility of doing so since yes this can be quite rare in my personal experience 99% of the time you might want to spend your time on actual trading posts on planets since this tends to be a much faster method at spawning the waves of ships and you can quickly reload over there and cause the waves to spawn way quicker and they will also land way quicker compared to space stations. Coming up at number 6 let's also talk about multi-tool spawn manipulation and there's 5 ways you can get multi-tools from space stations, from space anomalies, minor outposts, gifts from aliens 
tokens and finally as rewards from monoliths. Now there is something that you need to know about these multi-tools and that is of course multi-tool loot pools or the loot pool basics. So on every given system each planet, each moon as well as the space station has its own pool of two up to four multi-tool models that can spawn on that certain celestial body. That's basically the reason and the explanation for why you might see different multi-tools when relogging in front of a multi-tool cabinet on any given planet or moon or space station. In fact, the only thing that stays constant in these cabinets is the class of the multi-tool that you find as well as the slot. Um, so let's say you come across a cabinet that spawns a maximum rank multi-tool but you don't like its skin or its type. Maybe it's a pistol but what you're looking for is a rifle. So what you can do is to actually manipulate this spawn and uh, take advantage of these stats but search for the actual multi-tool type and skin on the other planets, moons or the space station in the same system. So what you can do is to research each planet, moon or space station one by one until you find um, an actual model that you love, do a save game on that particular celestial body to force the game to use that multi-tool model and then go back to the same cabinet with the maximum rank and once you reach it you will see that the game now utilizes the maximum rank of that cabinet but with the skin and type of the multi-tool from the different celestial body that you just did a save reload on. This is basically loot pool manipulation 101. At number 7 let's go over the portal interference and kind of explain it especially since Hello Games has drastically changed this over the years and even more so ever since the Beyond update. Now you probably already noticed that whenever you pass through a portal you might see that the galactic map is inaccessible and the teleporters are inoperable or the base computers can be built and neither can you recall your freighter as it will give you this error with the portal interference. So this is something that Hello Games has intended to do. They uh, intended to uh, make permanent portal travel more restrictive than in the past. Not really sure why. Maybe it's for balancing reasons. Maybe they didn't want us to travel so easily from one corner of the universe to the other and yes it kind of makes sense since this was easily abusable in the past to actually skip an entire galaxy and pretty much reach the core in like well the first five minutes of the game. So uh, in the past the way bypassing these limitations worked was really simple um, you could travel through for example a portal go on the space station on the destination system interact with the teleporter and then go back through the portal again and that would cause um, the destination system to appear in your teleporter list and then you could pretty much uh, bypass the portal entirely and go over there without having the restrictions in the first place. Um, the second one was by simply finding and claiming a base computer that uh, randomly spawns in the wild and you can still do this to this day by simply using the cartographer map and searching for a shelter and in this case a shelter to be more specific habitable base. So this is exactly what will point you towards uh, one of these wild base computers but unfortunately this as well as the previous method I was talking about have been addressed and they no longer work because these destinations do not register in your teleporter list even if you claim an actual base on your destination planet and even though you will see it visible rename it and even upload to the next over there it's not going to register in your teleporter list the only actual existing method to bypass this restriction and something that uh, my friend Zane um, has covered recently is by actually joining a friend's game and to be more specific you have to join the friend's game while he's on the other side so in the destination system so let's say you want to reach the other side of the galaxy or maybe a certain hub you will have to have your friend to manually input those coordinates in his teleporter manually travel over there with its restrictions in place and then join his game from the join options menu in uh, in the main menu over there um, but once you do that you will have to summon the nexus and from this point on you will have to exit your ship to do a uh, save reload and then get back into your ship and once you uh, are going to uh, exit the space anomaly is going to give you an option to either teleport to your current system or to your friend's system as this was a functionality added in the living ship update and the only one that currently let you bypass this restriction but yeah once you reach his side you're going to be able to uh, take benefits of everything in that system including seeing the map and calling everything that was otherwise restricted. Anyway this has been it with the video i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always if you did don't forget to leave a comment subscribe and activate that notification bell and i will see you guys in the next one